The Symbolism of Fish Scientists have speculated that we evolved from fish. In the womb we have rudimentary gills and the feet of human embryos reveal links to prehistoric fish. Furthermore, in the age of fishes about 400 million years ago, the first fish evolved feet from fish fins and started to walk on land. The word leg is cognate with Lacerta, lizard. Were we all once lizard men with scales? And is the symbolism of the fish connected with scientists' hypothesized evolutionary history? No, it is simpler. Fish are found only in water. Indeed, the expression, he is like a fish out of water, is used to denote anyone in surroundings they are unable to handle. And as water is symbolically spirit, the concept that fish are representing is thus entirely spiritual. So where is water symbolically? If we know where it is, the symbolism should then be apparent. fish. Well, at first it is an element found in the cosmic egg sandwiched between the earth and air levels. And in the videos of the ocean and sea, as well as the island and aura, we saw that this great circular sea surrounding the island that is us contains fish symbolic fish in a symbolic sea. Vuzamazulu, Credo, Matwa, Zulu, Shaman, Dreams, Prophecies and Mysteries. My grandfather told me that a Sangoma must be able to draw knowledge from what he called the hidden lake. There is, he said, a huge unseen lake somewhere in the spirit world where all the knowledge of the universe past, present and future is to be found. Knowledge lives in that lake in the form of little silver fishes, my grandfather said. You must never say again that you do not know something. You must just ask the lake, the unseen lake, to provide you with the knowledge that you seek. So, as we can see from our diagram of the mind, information or knowledge in the form of data and functional input, see the yellow boxes at the top of the diagram, is caught by our higher spirit, immortal soul, and landed on the shore of our minds, and our immortal soul becomes a sort of fisherman of ideas. Standing on the shore, Calling the catch in. Pond and pool fish. But once there, it travels via the river that flows from our higher spirit to our mortal mind and our subconscious. See, blue wavy line and gets stored in the pond that is our upper Dan Chen. See video of the symbolism of lakes, ponds and pools. Well, it may be used by our conscious selves, or it may be further distributed to other ponds, the middle and lower Dan Chens. River fish. and they travel and get distributed all over the body 
by the meridians, traditional Chinese medicine, or in the Hindu system, the nadis. And in this case, they can be thought of as river fish. See video, rivers and streams. At which point you should be asking, so we know a fish is spirit? We know it is found in rivers, streams, ponds, pools, lakes and the sea. What on earth is it symbolically representing? Lewis Carroll And Lewis Carroll gave us some major clues in Alice in Wonderland. Note the reference to the curls and hair as well. See our hair video from Chapter 6, Pig and Pepper. For a minute or two, she stood looking at the house and wondering what to do next, when suddenly a footman in livery came running out of the wood. She considered him to be a footman because he was in livery. Otherwise, judging by his face only, she would have called him a fish and rapped loudly at the door with his knuckles. It was opened by another footman in livery, with a round face and large eyes like a frog, and both footmen, Alice noticed, had powdered hair that curled all over their heads. She felt very curious to know what it was all about, and crept a little way out of the wood to listen. The fish footman began by producing from under his arm a great letter nearly as large as himself, and this he handed over to the others, saying, in a solemn tone, for the Duchess, an invitation from the Queen to play croquet. The frog footman repeated in the same solemn tone, only changing the order of the words a little, from the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. Then they both bowed low, and their curls got entangled together. So from this we know the fish is symbolically a carrier of messages. It is not the message itself. Indeed, the fish has no need to know the content of the message. All it needs to know is the address. So it can carry messages of inspiration, wisdom, dreams, visions, healing instructions, a flash of conscience, premonition, an intuition, a prophetic insight, the solution to problems, even an invitation onto the spiritual path. Ironically, communication companies have copied this symbolic idea by using what they call packets. By using packet switching networks, computer and electronic messages can be sent to, for example, internet or phone addresses. So their packets are the mystics fish. There are even flying fish now, packets that can fly magically to satellites and back. Perhaps even better, a constellation to celebrate their existence, Isis Volans. Although the first depiction of this constellation in a celestial atlas was in Johann Bayer's Uranometria of 1603. In some symbolic systems, fishes' eggs are then the messages themselves. The eggs then are sacred, messages from heaven. Bubbles in champagne go up as prayers for help, and caviar comes down as heavenly answers. A Dictionary of Symbols, J. E. Serlo. Because there is a closer symbolic relationship between the sea and the Magna Mater, Great Mother, some peoples have held the fish to be sacred. There were some Asiatic rites that embraced fish worship and priests were forbidden to eat it. The son of Atagatis, Ashtator Astati, was named Ichthys. The Ichthys, or Ichthus, 
from the Greek is a symbol consisting of two intersecting arcs. The symbol was adopted by early Christians as a secret symbol for a person distributing the message. Sulo continued. By reason of its bobbin-like shape, it becomes a kind of bird of the nether regions. The Fisher King belongs to the legend of the Holy Grail. According to Marx, in Nouvelle Recherche sur la littérature athurienne, this role of the mythical monarch relates him to the apostles, or fishermen, of the Sea of Galilee. Bulging Eyes Both fish and frogs have big, unblinking eyes. Eyes that look like they have thyroid problems. And staring and unblinking eyes were once a sign that a person was having a very profound spiritual experience. Thus, figuratively speaking, a fish with its bulging eyes is a symbol of a messenger chock a block full of messages of a spiritual nature. Nets In our video on the loom and weaving, we showed that one of the ways we can view perceptions is as a series of interconnected threads. Our perceptions are then interconnected by threads, links, that cross-relate shared action and activity. The loom is one symbolic name given to this vast network of interconnected thoughts and actions. But the other name given to it is the net. J.E. Serlo stated that fish are symbolically feminine. Many are silver, the symbolic colour of the moon. And C.G. Young also linked them to the subconscious. And the subconscious contains our perceptions. So there is much complementary symbolism in action here. Serlo, in his explanation, also noted their similarity to a bobbin. Thus, it is a symbol of weaving, the weaving of the net. So a fish is not just a messenger within our own body, it is the very messenger that by weaving all over the net, constructs the links between us all. It can also be an idea that travels, and by doing so creates a great network of connected thought and ideas. When Jesus talked of making his disciples fishers of men, he was talking about the spreading of the net, capturing people's minds through ideas. His ideas and those of his disciples, fish weaving through the perceptions of his followers. When Jesus fed the crowds with only five fishes, he was feeding them with only five main ideas. But he still kept them happy. The Mokokyo and Pisces The Mokokyo is a wooden fish effigy often seen in Japanese temples. It is carved into a roundish shape from a solid block of wood. It is then hollowed out so that when the priest strikes it with a leather padded drumstick, the sound has a strange hypnotic effect on the hearer. This drum is often used to accompany a huten sutra reading. But here we have the additional complementary symbolism for the fish. Because when there are two intertwined, it becomes linked to the symbol of the Urubaras. And within this context, it represents a change of system or ideas. 
the remove from an old set of ideas to a new one, with the implication that the new is generated from the old. That it is not a jump from one set to something completely different, but a smooth, incremental transition from the one to the next. And one of the most favoured symbols to represent this is that of Pisces, the constellation, where the two fish are shown apart but linked by a thread. The constellation of Pisces Australis. There is one other constellation that uses the fish as a symbol, Pisces Australis. The adjective astral from Latin australis refers to anything of or related to the southern hemisphere and thus we have the name of the southern continent Australia and the location of the constellation. In Johann Bode's Uranographia we see feet above the fish. These belong to Aquarius who is pouring water into the fish's mouth and in legend and myth this fish swallowed the waters from the flood. See o video the flood. In effect, if a flood was symbolically or actually used to remove the old system, then this fish was used to dry up or bring back the earth. In ancient Egypt, they even specified the fish after which the constellation was created. Oxyrinca adored in Egypt, and the fish that swallowed the penis of Osiris. In the myth of Osiris, the father, Isis, the mother, fashioned a replacement for Osiris's missing penis or phallus, cut off by Seth, and attaching this to her dead husband's body, brought him to life and conceived Horus, the son. See Mother Father Son video. Seth represents disorder and destruction, and Isis is the great mother who gives birth to a messianic figure in Horus, who both fights and wins against Seth, but manages to find the apparently dead Osiris and create a new kingdom out of the old by giving him the eye torn out by Seth, meaning that those who willfully turn a blind eye to a system's failures and by their neglect cause it to fail, can be helped by giving them eyes to see, and by doing so can enlist their help in the changes needed. <laughs>